Rodgers versus Jameis. Packers versus Saints. And to the victor go the spoils. Jameis, big time victor in this one. Tossing five touchdowns. Oh, and the best part, zero turnovers. Saints defense picked off Rodgers twice. Head coach Matt LaFleur said his team was absolutely embarrassed yesterday. Here's how Aaron Rodgers described it. Just one game. You know, we played bad. I played bad. Offensively, we didn't execute very well. Uh, one game, we got 16 to go. We were coming off a couple of NFC Championship games uh, and obviously feeling good about the unit that we have on offense. That's what we talk about a lot. So this is a good uh, good kick in the you-know-where. Hopefully uh, get us going in the right direction, going back home and playing division opponent next week. Well, this will humble you, Aaron. Worst passer rating among reigning MVPs ever in a season opener. That's not great. Mike Tomlin. Nick say. Speaking All of Nick, Nick that he's been did offseason turmoil, you think, lead to Rodgers' disastrous week one? Listen, I, it, it, you have your worst offseason of your career, and then week one you have arguably your first game of your career. I think it certainly didn't help. Now, whether that's because there was just too much going on, maybe he actually really missed the offseason programs, or it's just happenstance, I'm not sure. But the chronology of it is obviously not great because all la- all offseason, his trump card and the argument with the Packers has been, y'all drafted my replacement, then I won league MVP. It doesn't work as well when it's, you drafted my replacement, then I scored three points. So, like, that's a problem. But the bigger, <laughs> to me, problem, Broussard, that is indicative of a bigger trend. And, again, I've been one of Rodgers' biggest supporters. I argue with Colin about this all the time. Is when Rodgers gets beat, more often than some of the other greats, just let's go with a rope. So they've only lost seven times under Matt Nagy in the regular season. But in the first year, San Francisco was beating them soundly. And it's like, okay, we'll get you next time maybe. 37-8 to eight loss. Last year, Tampa, it, it was going well. Aaron Rodgers was doing the discount double pump in the end zone. And then all of a sudden, yeah. pick six, pick six, or near pick six. And now it's 38-10. to 10. And yesterday... At one point, it was 21 to 17, but that was yards to points. 21 Packers yards to 17 Saints points. Not great. (laughs) But still, the Packers were alive. They were alive when they're driving down 17-3 to start the second half. Rodgers throws a pick there, which is the first red zone interception he's thrown since week six of 2019. And then on the very next drive, to me, as a giveaway pick, that pass he threw from the end zone, it, that's like a, a pass you throw on fourth down where it's like, well, whatever. It's the same as a punt. Hail Mary. So yeah. I do think it's pro- – you're right. I do think, Broussard, it's problematic that w- we have seen for this Packers team as good as they've been over the last three years, when things start going bad, they're like, all right, just ma- – you know what I mean? We'll see you next time. It's like a tennis player down 5-0 in a set. They're like, all right, just give this game away and get them next time to save energy. But that's not typically what you see from the best teams. And so that, to me, is more concerning than the offseason stuff, Broussard. Now, look, it's fair to wonder, has Aaron Rodgers created the type of culture or led in a way that that makes the team resilient? You know, and, and that's certainly questionable because the team takes on the personality of their quarterback but I, I don't like that. Look, Aaron Rodgers won the offseason. I, I think most people were on his side. Not everybody, but most people were on his side. Everybody was calling out Brian Gutenkoos. Oh, yeah, Aaron Rodgers is one of the best to ever do it. He's one of the best Packers ever. Sure, he should have say. Look at all the other quarterbacks that get say in front office matters and things like that. Everybody loved Aaron Rodgers. We love the press conference, the 30 minutes where he talked. He called everybody out, right? He he listed all of his teammates that had been treated unfairly on their way out the door from the Packers. The Packers themselves brought in Randall Cobb just for Aaron Rodgers, all right? They offered him a long-time lucrative contract extension. He won the offseason, and then you follow it up with this? This was, I mean, it was, you said earlier, Nick, it was the worst game of his career. It very well may have been, and it was also very uncharacteristic of him. That turnover in the red zone, 
was a horrific pass. You just don't typically see yeah. Aaron Rodgers do things like that. And you cannot follow up an offseason in which you've demanded a trade. You've skipped the offseason workouts. You've, con you've, you've thought about playing we'll for it. other teams. You've, you've, <laughs> you've uh, tried out as the host of Jeopardy. You've <laughs> contemplated <laughs> retirement. <laughs> All right? And then you sit down <laughs> with Aaron Rodgers, our own Aaron Rodgers here at Fox, and you tell Aaron her, Andrews. great job, Aaron, but you Aaron tell Andrews. Aaron Andrews, I'm sorry, you tell her that you are, uh, you have nothing left to prove on the football field. And then you go out and do this, the worst quarterback of the weekend, it just can't happen, Wiles. And don't defend him, Wiles. I can't believe you're going to defend this guy. Well, well, it's it rings like, oh, you know, Shaquille O'Neal, you know why he can't hit his foul shots? Too busy making those hip hop albums. Ah, uh, Shaq Diesel, <laughs> my friend, he get on the free throw line. Free throw Diesel should be your nickname. Yes, he tried out for Jeopardy. I do not think that he was busy looking up potent potables, so he decided to start throwing the ball to the wrong team. I think that the Packers came into a focused, super focused. Saints team that was sort of inspired by their relocation. Their Packers started two offense, uh, rookie offensive linemen. Saints took advantage of that. And they only ran the ball 15 times. Once they got down, Matt LaFleur threw out the playbook. Should have run the ball more. So, look, is there a 1% chance that the tumult from the offseason affected Aaron Rodgers? Yes. Is there a 2% chance? No. I don't think Jeopardy had anything oh, to do with it. 1%. Nor do I think the Packers season is in Jeopardy. I think they're totally fine. So you're telling play. me there's a chance. Your hosting gig wild. They'll be all right. I'm just saying. That's Foxborough now. In the battle of former Bama quarterbacks, it was Tua who came out on top over Mac Jones, but just barely. Miami getting the 17-16 win. But Mac looked pretty good, finished 281 yards and a touchdown. Most passing yards by a Patriots quarterback in his first career start. How about that? Here was Mac on where he goes from here. Yeah, I think we just we can get better. That's just how we have to look at it. Definitely wasn't good enough starting with me. Um, yeah, so we just we got to watch the film and uh, we lost, so it's not good enough. It is not. Kevin Wilds, should Pats fans be encouraged or discouraged after the week one loss? Oh, encouraged in a major way, Jenna. We lost the battle but oh, won the war God. because. And we, we, are, we are pushing this narrative aside. People didn't know if Mac Jones was any good. In fact, people on this very show named Nick Wright. Who still like, oh, I don't know. Granted, he had the <laughs> highest low. completion percentage in, of all of college football won a national championship. I wouldn't take him. I would, I would take anybody else. Yeah. But we saw a lot of rookie quarterbacks, and guess who played the best? Mac Jones. In fact, if you looked at all the rookie quarterbacks in the history of the NFL, you know who had the highest completion percentage of all time? Do -do 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 -do. Research, oh, wow. Mac Jones. So am I encouraged the fact that he had a historically great performance? Yes. Did we have some turnovers? Yep. Did Mac Jones have any? No. Did we have some penalties? Yeah, the most in our last 23 games. Did Mac Jones? So many questions. No. Okay. So am I encouraged? I am wildly encouraged. Well, so I almost view this as a half you win. Be. I view us as, as .5 and show? 1 right now. Point five and 1. Not you know what? Point five and 1. You know There's what? Half win. We usually don't show graphics with only three names on it. I hate to do this to our stats people. Can we expand? Can we see this other who's who of who's that? Of Dusty double crossed first me. How, how Dusty does double crossed me. Make you feel? Oh, <laughs> what is that? EJ Manuel. What's That's he doing what these list. days? Deshaun Kaiser. Those are good quarterbacks. What's he doing these days? You know He's good. what all those guys have in common. <laughs> is their first game ever the coaching staff said training wheels training wheels and that's why yesterday the Patriots you're like oh Mac Jones didn't turn the ball over and 70 yards of his passes how many how many points did they score oh 16 <laughs> in other words the the sixth fewest of any team in the league this week and so what what happened 14 play 65 yard drive field goal 14 plays, 67-yard drive, field goal. 
14 play, 57 yard drive, field goal. The one touchdown drive yeah, came goals. after they stalled out in the red zone again, but they got bailed out <laughs> by a very questionable roughing the passer penalty that ended up leading to the touchdown. So if we are being honest here, and there's the touchdown, they, the, there's a reason the Patriots, Broussard, only scored 16 points. Because they ha they attempted nothing down the field, and they do not have dynamic weapons that are going to be able to do yards after catch to be able to m give you explosive plays. So, I, hey, but hey, they have this great defense. Yeah, but they they just lost to a team with a better defense that's in their division that also has a young Alabama quarterback who's better than Mac Jones. So, no, I don't think the Patriots fans or Broussard should be encouraged. I think you guys both had the Patriots over the Dolphins to the playoffs. You still feel that way? You feel that way right now? Oh, yes, yeah. I do. Broussard. I do, Nick. Yes. And, and I, I do feel that way. I think Mac Jones played better <laughs> than Tua did yesterday. And I think you mentioned it. The great defense for Miami. That's why they only had 16 points. All right, so give the defense some credit. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Mac Jones, and I get it. They dinked and they dunked and they were cautious. It was his first game. He's a rookie, but he will get better. I like his demeanor at the press conference. Very Belichickian, if you notice. Monotone, yes. basic. You know, I liked when he was on the field. He didn't want the first football that he threw a touchdown pass with. No, give it. I'm, I'm, I'm focused, baby. I'm about winning. I'm about the bottom line. That reminds me of a certain other New England quarterback who will remain nameless because I don't want to put too much pressure oh. on Mac. But, yeah, Tony I, I liked what I saw from Mac Jones. I feel good. <laughs> I mean, I'm broken. Okay. <laughs> well, I wonder, Jenna, what I'm no, interested in, I, will he what? keep his second what? career touchdown pass, which will probably happen around week five. So be monitored.